Um, now I will be covering on role of SBRT in recurrent prostate cancer and in oligometastasis. So time given was 15 minutes. So I have prepared according to 15 minutes. So I was expecting one or two minutes more. So biochemical recurrence is to the tune of around 15%. I'll just minimize the window. So biochemical recurrence is to the tune of around 15%. Uh, at uh, five years in lower intermediate and rates are higher in case of more advanced disease. PSA doubling time of 12 months, more than 12 months, it suggests there, there will be a higher chances of having a local relapse. If it is less than 12 months, there is a higher prob probability of having a metastatic along with the local recurrence. And most of the recurrences are around the dominant nodule. And there is a uh, linear correlation between the total dose of RT delivered previously with a biochemical reference with multiple me uh, meta-analysis showing this. So rising PSA is one of the first landmark of recurrence. After radical prostatectomy, it is point, more than 0.2. After RTOG, Phoenix definition, nether plus two. And NCCN and other guidelines and European um, uh, Urology Association, they also suggest that recurrent evaluation should start early, even before the phoenix is reached. And but we should be very mindful regarding the PSA bounce, which was discussed, and the median value is around 0.45 at the median time of around 12 to 15 months. So the uh, PSMA and PET CT has uh, shortened the gap between the biochemical re uh, recurrence and the clinical recurrence, with the positive detection rate of around 58% at the PSA value of 0.2 to 0.5. And it increases to around 93% when the PSA goes up to between 1 to 2 nanogram per ml. Post of recurrences, common sites are vesicle uteral anastomosis and around the seminal vesicles and uh, remnant ductiles. So, this is one of a case uh, when we, which we treated in 2012 with uh, Gleason C plus 4 T2B. We delivered 74 uh, gray, uh, this to the um, whole prostate along with the uh, and this, he had a recurrence in 2021. And now the biopsy is 4 plus 4 with the PSA 3.2 because of COVID, he could not come. And the PSA doubling time is around 14 to 15 months. So recurrences are frequently very high grade. And they are um, uh, in one of these uh, study of the surgical post uh, surgery, it, uh, after radio recurrences, it was seen that 27% times the Gleason score of more than uh, or equal to nine was uh, detected in the recurrence setting, whereas all those patients, almost 90% has a Gleason score of less than uh, or up to seven in the initial diagnosis. This is possibly because of the selection of the resistant cone. And uh, it is very dicey because extra prostatic involvement was seen in more than 50% of cases, despite the organ confined recurrence in the imaging. So this radio recurrence uh, is like a ticking bomb, as already discussed by authors, because it, is, it will lead to metastasis and ultimately death. Uh, so, uh, but most of the oncologists, they are wary of uh, treating this uh, radio recurrences because, they, because the tissues are very vulnerable after radiation and because of the high toxicity and disappointing outcome of the cell based therapy. So, most of them, almost in this meta analysis, 92% of uh, the people they operate or they uh, gave their patient ADT in case of. Uh, um, only prostate local recurrences. Only 2% received uh, the local therapies. So there is no unanimous among the different uh, expert societies. So some are advising brachytherapy, but there is no consensus about the best treatment. But one thing is there, if there is a rising PSA and um, we have to rule out the metastatic, we have to rule out the metastatic uh, disease. And secondly, a trust uh, guided biopsy 12 to 18 ports is recommended. So these are two important things we have to do. So uh, now coming directly on to SBRT after the uh, radio recurrence. Uh, the ideal candidate for salvage therapies are the patients, uh, younger patients, that means less than 70, life expectancy for five or 10 years, but baseline, they should have a baseline that in, initially they should have a, a disease of low to intermediate risk with PSA doubling time of more than 12 months and um, the interval between the previous and recurrence should be more than two years, preferably three and four years also, and absolute PSA value of 10 uh, nanogram and some consider 20 nan 15 nanogram also. And they should, most important thing, there should be absence of significant intestinal or urinary, uh, urinary uh, comorbidities or previous radiation residual toxicity. 
these are the additional MSKCC criteria where they follow. There should be a long interval, uh, um, disease-free interval of more than three years, and it should be an organ-confined disease. And uh, these are the BRCA criteria. We have taken the volume less than 45 cc and IPSS more than 50, uh, 15 uh, IPSC. And there should not be any uh, residual more than or equal to grade two urinary or GI toxicity. And this is also applicable for SBRT also. Uh, why there is a minimum time gap? Some say it's two years, three years, because histological resolution will take almost even up to 30 months and more. And a biopsy during that time might give you a false positive, false negative, and indeterminate results. And there is also a possibility of the um, a three plus three uh, scores. And biochemical uh, recurrence, if it is coming before 30 months, then it suggests there can be a coexisting metastatic disease also. And many of these studies for focal uh, SBRT boost, they take a criteria of four years after the uh, previous RT. And also ish, um, about the ADT. Uh, this is a very nice study published last year where they have seen the patients who have radio recurrences and then um, who receive SBRT for salvage. Uh, the local regional and metastatic failure are much higher in patients who are on continuous ADT and has, have has turned uh, CRPC. In contrast, in severe contrast to the patients who are still sensitive, you can see in CRPC patients, the uh, local regional failure over 91% in contrast to the sensitive patient who are 32 and three year recurrence hello yeah i think we have lost sham yes sir we lost his connection so, yeah no, no, I, I think i was huh, i was i think disconnected because of the electric but so um i think huh so, so the in so uh, we should not keep the patient for a long time edt because there is a risk for having a crpc status even though the patient has not metastasized so we should try to uh, salvage as early as possible before the patient getting into crpc status about target delineation whether whole gland or partial gland i think i'm audible yes yes, yes you are audible okay so uh, the target, there is no consensus. Even in this Delphi conference, there were people who were divided regarding the whole gland, although this was a Becky conference, but uh, still the, uh, for uh, radio recurrences, people are divided, whole gland or partial gland, but what to take? Most of the SBRT studies, uh, sorry, Becky studies, they have taken the whole gland, whereas in case of SBRT studies, almost uh, half of those studies, they have taken a full gland and half have taken focal gland and half have taken a partial gland. That means a focal nodule or half gland or a full gland. And this um, RTOG 0526, they included both the partial and um, a full, uh, full gland, full prostate patients. And this study by Mark Roche 3, in which they have taken one fourth of the patient were having a uh, target was whole gland and 25% were having a nodule and 25% were, were having the uh, partial. So there is no consensus, but uh, so the prominent proponent of people who are advising for the partial or uh, the focal is uh, based on these studies. This is a very elegant study in which the horizontal line defined the uh, previous baseline tumor and the um, and the vertical defines the uh, recurrence. So in this study, no patient demonstrated recurrence in areas outside the initial disease. This was published in Red Journal. So proponent of uh, focal RT uh, used this study as a rationale. And um, the proponent of whole, um, whole gain RT, they use this whole gain SBRT, they use this. Uh, if this is a meta-analysis of the um, salvage uh, surgery after radio recurrences. In this, in this meta-analysis, it was found that extra prostatic extension was common despite, despite the imaging showing the confined disease. Bilateral extension, that means both the lobes involved, was not seen in imaging in 46%, which was seen on pathology specimens. And, more, and greater than P22 disease was seen from 37 to 80% in these studies. So, and to add more confusion, there is a good concordance between the volume delineated by PSMA PET scan with histology as compared to the MR. As you can see in the study published in Green Journal, the mean target tumor volume for PSMA was 10 cc, for uh, histopathology was 10 cc, but uh, the, uh, on MRI it was only 4.5 cc. So the 
but at the same time there are some other studies which are showing there good concordance between the mri and the psma pet ct and um, this study published in red journal adds more confusion, more confusion although um, quite rationally that systemic uh, systematic cd biopsy is much more accurate in delineating target volumes as compared to psma and M, uh, np mri together um, so uh, not all recurrences are only a focal recurrences maybe recurrences can be multifocal like on the right side you can see that the psma pet scan so what is the best way out so best way out is the dual imaging with a pet ct and a mri plus mapping biopsy 12 to 18 course biopsy so that is going to give you a whole target if the if the lesions are quite diffuse uh, uh, quite uh, diffuse then uh, i think we should take a whole um, whole blend if it is just a focal area in the uh, only lateralized in the uh, uh, 3d biopsy then we should go for a uh, focal rt uh, no, this uh, please, is please summarize in next few slides please Okay, just give me around uh, three, four minutes. Uh, so in this uh, study uh, published, and this is a prospective study. So they, uh, the indications for the partial glands are biochemical reference more than four years, dual imaging for delineation, and these should be localized to half of um, half of one lobe, and PSA should be less than 50. And exclude, most important thing, uh, proximity to the disease should not be close to the rectum, and there should be no residual uh, previous toxicities. Dose constraint has been ranged from 30 to 30 gray in five fractions to 34 gray five fractions, 36 gray in uh, six fractions. This is one of our case where we have treated the whole brand. And you can see uh, in the center on the left arm, um, th this is a superimposed with the, um, uh, the, uh, with the catheter image. And we have excluded very beautifully, we have conformally uh, excluded the urethra from the high dose. We gave this patient 30 gray in six fractions. And um, there are a lot of uh, toxicities. This is a brachytherapy study. The toxicity, grade three toxicity, GU and GI range from uh, five to 20%. In case of SBRT, the toxicities uh, range for, uh, from um, two to 5%. Only one uh, study has 8% grade three higher toxicities. So it can further be reduced by good case selection. We should avoid any patient who has a recurrence close to the, um, close to the rectum. And if possible, uh, hydrogel can be inserted, alternative treatment, finishal tracking, um, or some with some millimeter accuracy, like in Cybernite. MR guided SBRT is an option. So I will skip this. Now coming on to the oligometastasis, which is a spectrum between the local and uh, frank metastatic disease. And there is no um, unanimous definition of the oligometastasis in terms of number of oligometastasis and location of oligometastasis. But this uh, Green Journal article gives about the uh, the philosophy of treating oligometastasis. That means oligometastasis should, uh, number should not be a criteria if you can give deliver a safe and effective treatment with a curative intent dose. So whatever numbers may be there, uh, if it can be de delivered, then can be a curative oligometastatic treatment. So uh, so one of the earlier studies have seen that uh, this was the SBRT study after the recurrence in so when they have in the SBRT group, they have seen that patients who have undergone a total consolidation has significantly reduced rate of new metastasis at six months compared to those who have undergone a subtotal consolidation. So optimal imaging, uh, pre-treatment imaging is must, even there are some suspicious areas which looks to be a malignant, they can be treated in the oligometastic setting. Uh, so as we know, nodes behave much better as compared to bone and viscera's. And there is a RPA classification, node fall to RPA1 classification in oligometastasis. And um, the dose are variable, but still in oligometastatic setting, uh, control is quite, uh, quite impressive control. But still the dose for oligometastasis is maximum safe dose, which can be delivered without, um, without compromising any critical structure should be the principle. But if you see the oligometastatic data, they include all sites. So they go by alpha beta of 10. So when proceed, we should remember we should go by alpha beta 1.5 and uh, 1.5 to 2. This is a purely oligometastatic but prostate. They have given a dose from 24 grain single fractions to 13, 3 grain. So dose for the when you are reading the oligometastatic literature, uh, we should be mindful regarding the single fraction uh, regarding the alpha beta and dose fractionation. So uh, metastatic directed therapy in metachronous setting improves outcome, which we know from the STORM trial and earlier trial, there have been improved in outcomes. And there is a 
survival advantage also in treating the oligometastasis as we have seen in cyber comet and two small cyber comet uh, are coming. This is the oligometastasis which we treated a prostate patient and after uh, around two or three years, he had the pelvic recurrence we treat. And the oligometastasis treatment of the spine mat is quite common. And yeah. So take home message is local recurrence is the function of dose. Dominant nodule or dominant lobe is the most common site of recurrence. Salvage SBRT for recurrent is feasible. So most important thing is the case selection. And those are still, be, still being worked out. We normally uh, follow around. We have started from 27.5 and 5, but we do 30, point, uh, 30 grain 5 sections in uh, one patient, 35 and 5. Dual imaging and mapping biopsy 12 to 18 course is most important uh, to mark out the volume. And oligometastatic treatment improves outcome that we know. Mm -hmm.